Hey, guess where I am at? I'm on the road and I am in Mockton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is my first ever international podcast and it's the General Lee's first ever international jump. This is Thursday, April 18, 2024. Tomorrow, the 19th of April, 2024, at high noon Eastern time, not Eastern time, Atlantic time, this car will be jumping that ramp right over, right over here, that ramp behind me and flying through the air. This episode is brought to you by Griner Auto Body of Washington, Iowa, using state-of-the-art techniques and decades of experience to get your car back on the road after an accident. Car Doctor of Washington, Iowa. No matter who Frankensteined it, they can fix and clean and customize it. McDonald Boneyard of Kyoto, Iowa, for all of your farm equipment and auto recycling needs. Hinshaw Trailer Sales of Richland, Iowa. You need a trailer, they've got your trailer, and they fix what they sell and don't in their full-time repair shop. Girling Repair of Winfield, Iowa. If your mower is dead, call Fred, your Husqvarna, Aaron's, and Gravely dealer. B&B Propane and the family of Jet Stops present Southeast Iowa Today. I'm John Bain, author of Christie's Journey, The Beat Goes On, and your host. We're going to meet some fine people, some stunt men, some stunt crew, you're going to learn a lot about Northeast Ohio Dukes, Raymond Kahn, and his buds. Brunswick, Canada. This is the ramp that this car right here will be launching off of on April 19th. The Northeast Ohio Dukes are in preparation today, setting things up for tomorrow's jump. Taking my jack for a walk. Nice. <laughs> Tyler? Yeah. You made this ramp. Uh, most of it. Well, sort of. I, I modified it. So uh -huh. years ago, uh, Raymond copied the design of a uh, ramp we saw in Hollywood and built this in sections to be easily transportable. We quickly realized that it would be much better off as a trailer, so they welded it all together, turned it into a trailer. We used to have to bury the front half of the ramp in dirt. Right here, that part. Yeah, basically... What you see here, this second section, uh -huh. uh, used to be dirt so that he had a smooth transition. Because what happens is if you hit the ramp at an angle right off the rip, um, it unsettles the suspension, right? It makes the car bounce too much. Okay. So we spent a lot of time, it was hours, you know, like two hour project to, to hand shovel dirt and smooth it out and pack it down. We'd be running one of the trucks up it, you know? That's a lot of manual labor I'd be allergic to. Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. It, it, was a, it was a big effort. So. When we jumped in Detroit in 2017, it was the uh, first time we'd ever jumped from pavement to pavement. And we uh, didn't want to have to truck a whole bunch of dirt in and sweep it up afterwards and whatever, because it was a public street. So we built some uh, custom one-off plywood extensions with blocking under them and everything. And it worked really well. So when we got back home, we said, how can we make that into a uh, quick deploy type situation? And uh, I came up with this design these ramp extensions, this little eight foot piece is uh, almost 400 pounds per side. Wow. And it has to be real, real sturdy because it's only supported here at the end uh -huh. and all the way up there at the top. So when he hits the ramp, all the force of the car is delivered onto this. Wow. And to keep it from springboarding up, it's pinned down right here. And approximately how much does the car weigh? Uh, we've never actually weighed one of the wannabe Lees that's uh -huh. made out of a Crown Vic. Right. Uh, the guesstimate is somewhere around 38 to 4,200 pounds. It's a lot of weight hitting that. Roughly the same weight as a street car, yeah. Yeah, that's um, And then he's going to hit the ramp somewhere between 65 and 75. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is awesome. I, uh, Tyler, I, I want to thank you for being on the program today. Yeah, for sure. And, and I'm, I'm going to catch up with you, I'm oh, sure, yeah. a little uh, more. I'll be here. All right, Any I'm gonna more questions? I'm going to wrap up this segment, but we'll catch up again. Sounds great. Uh, Ray? Liberal arts major. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're going to do this, huh? Oh, yeah. We're going to do it. We're going to do it right. It looks yeah. like it. So this is going to be the final spot for the ramp, right? Yep. Yep. I'll start out there by the trees there at the end of the parking lot there. And okay. A straight line from here uh, to the ramp. Hopefully you can get up to 70, 75 miles an hour. I want to 
uh, beat our Mopar Nationals uh, record, which is what, Pat, 151 feet? 151 feet at 65 miles an hour. So That's incredible. So that's somewhere out there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, well, we could actually, uh, what I want to do, we have our our little wheel. Uh -huh. um, we're going to run that out there, put a mark on the ground, and that's where 151 is. So we're going to know automatically when I land if, if we succeed. If it, that's that. awesome. There's gonna, along with myself and my good buddy Sparky Bentley from Comanche, Iowa, we're going to be out here with hundreds of other people watching you do There's this. probably going to be thousands. Thousands, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. From what I hear, uh, and, and we're supposed to be doing this at noon tomorrow, but they're expecting long lines at the gate, which if that happens, uh, we may have to push it off a little bit. Gotcha. You know, so. Well, that just adds to the which, anticipation and the jitters for, for, for me, you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, the jitters. You're like, you got that 12 got noon, the, the high noon jitters, in your head. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, but I, yeah, it's, you know, hitting the ramp at a high rate. Of, I mean, this is a giant wedge. Yeah, you know? it sure and, is. And it's a cool feeling. It stings a little, you know, but it's a cool feeling hit, hitting the ramp and how you just become weightless just like that. And, uh, it's got to be the most ultimate amusement park ride it's it's i've always explained it like that john i i've actually said that when people ask me uh what is it like i don't know I, i'm like it's a a very radical extreme roller coaster ride but at the end the roller coaster car falls <laughs> Yeah. Falls off the tracks and lands on the ground. Yeah. So uh it's an O beep moment. So so imagine like uh being on like a a, a a roof of a house, right? And you're sitting in in a chair with loaded with bricks and someone flings you off. And that's what it feels like. So, <laughs> I've never done that before, so I don't know what don't that feels be, like. <laughs> you know, just just imagine like just stand in here, John, right? Right. You stand here and you jump off and you're like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Now get back on there and have somebody give you some center blocks and then jump again. Oh. And you, you're gonna feel that. And, yeah. And we try to make the cars as light as possible because the heavier make them and that's a lot more weight pulling you down yeah and uh that's what can can injure you because aside from i don't from want to a... land flat i, I don't want to land flat that's my biggest fear even though i'm wearing a jump vest the, the whiplash can be pretty severe just so the, you're the shock of it all just so you won't have much weight in the trunk no we got like about 400 pounds of weight a lot of people you know they see us you land on the yeah. front end they're like oh they need more weight no we don't right you know uh, uh there's been you want that accordion yeah we want crash. the car to crunch up uh even Corey thanks uh uh cory will tell you that uh landing on the front is, is the best because the car crunches up and keeps it and that, that could be further from the truth uh and a lot of people are like oh my gosh he's landing on ha hard asphalt or concrete that's that's easier for us too and the reason why is because we scrape off okay when the car lands we scrape off um, when so you're, it's taking a lot of energy yeah when you're uh on the, the the dirt the car digs in like a yard dart and of course you know it, it doesn't scrape off it right. digs in and then you and all that, all that force is all yeah. in one location that yeah. way which isn't good it's not good. <laughs> trust me it's not good this is jump number 28 I think on our pod, your podcast, yes. we said 27. Yeah, we were like 27, 27 28. 28. Yeah. It, this is my 28th jump. Well, that's so, awesome. Who would ever thought it would have lasted this long? I didn't. Yeah. Well, I say the first time I had the honor of meeting you was in 2013, February of 2013, yeah, Monticello, you? Iowa. You brought the Daisy Jeep to the snowing. car show. Yeah, yeah, snowing. I know. We had a difficult time getting there, but yeah. we got there. You got there. And, yeah. We had a great show. Your general was here. Our Jeep was here. Yeah. We had a party in between. And Catherine Bach was right there. Right, that right. was awesome. You know what's uh, 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 funny is that Catherine, Tom, and John, Bo, Luke, and Daisy, they're all in my hometown. Well, an hour away from my hometown. This weekend? This weekend. We That's so wild. From where we live. So it's like... You know, they couldn't wait a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so we had to split our team in twos because they're taking some of Mikey and Mike Olovich. They're, they're taking the, the Jeep and the, the Roscoe car you okay. know, to that event for them. So Northeast Ohio Dukes is a very busy operation. I guess so. Who would have ever thought? I it's, never it's thought incredible. by jumping the generally one time back in August of uh, 2007 that this would have turn in we're in canada yeah that's what we're i was just gonna canada. say we're at the mockdom yeah, mockdom coliseum you know you know why this is a little special for me not only because we're in canada 
But uh, I, I grew fond of a stuntman uh, from Canada. Really? His name uh, was Ken Carter. Okay. Uh, the Mad Canadian, they called him. Okay. And uh, he he was a great stuntman. He didn't like to be called a daredevil, neither do I. Uh -huh. you know? A daredevil, they do things a little reckless. Right. They don't take all the necessary precautions to to ensure their safety. You know, uh, stuntman, we, we do everything to make sure that we're going to, to survive. Yes. And, you know, uh, so Ken, uh, he, he's done all kinds of great stunts. Uh, he was killed, unfortunately. He was in a rocket-powered 82-83 Trans Am, and uh, he overshot... They put too much rocket fuel in. He overshot uh, the, the pond. He was jumping up and up in Canada, and uh, the car flipped over and it fell on its roof. And oh, no. the, the top of the roof came down to the top of the the, the doors, and it killed him instantly. Nice I could only imagine uh, if he would have lived, what great things he could have. If he, and, you know, I have a feeling if he if he could have if he would have lived, he would have probably been here. For probably this event, so, probably so. And I'm that sure he's, an I'm sure he's looking down on you, saying, "You go get him." Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I don't think he gets all the credit that that he deserves. Um, you know, and and so do, like the the stunt men and women that were on the Dukes, I don't think right. they get the proper credit. You know, I, I mean, mean, it's it just like we said in our conversation back in February on this program, they entertained millions around the world yeah, and they get no recognition but this is why we do that yeah. to to honor what they did well you're doing a an exemplary job of that thank my you, friend and thank, thank you. you for being on right. i wish you the best thank you. i thank hope you. to catch up with you later maybe tomorrow i'll catch you a little bit if you know depending on how the jitters are maybe catch you oh, a little we'll, before no, we'll, we'll work with you all we'll, right we'll have some time and just get here early and yeah. we'll let you uh we'll let you down here uh with, with our team and stuff like that you can count you on got that. A vip access so you're the man all right, buddy. thanks thanks to ray and the guys for the up close all access interview here at the mockton coliseum in mockton new brunswick canada I'm on the road. This is my first international podcast, and I want to thank you for watching, and I need to thank our sponsors, Griner Auto Body, Car Doctor, McDonald Boneyard, Hinshaw Trailer Sales, Girling Repair, B&B Propane, and the family of Jet Stops. I'm your host, John Bain. Stay friendly, Southeast Iowa.